Hey everybody. Now I'm going to show you how a laptop's cooling system works. I made a video back in late 2009, but uh, back then all I had was a standard 480p camera. I was actually using the video function on my Canon PowerShot A470 picture camera. But now I have better camcorders, so I'm going to show you this again. I'm also going to discuss some common problems with some cooling systems in some notebooks, particularly with um, HP computers. Anyways, in most notebooks, you have a heat pipe that runs across certain components and goes to the back of the computer to where you have fans. And you also have a fan located here. This fan draws in air through here and blows out the back and sometimes out the side. It really depends. This is an example of a good quality design. You have the Northridge chip, then you have your CPU, and then you have your outputs. The Northridge doesn't get quite as hot as the CPU does under load. So the Northridge is put first, so the heat comes, a little bit of heat comes that's on the Northridge chip comes off of it, goes across the CPU. This is where more of your heat will come from, is right here. This comes through here, comes out to this fan. And when your CPU gets up to a certain temperature, this fan will kick in to a low speed. And if it still doesn't cool very well, it kicks into a high speed. I'm going to pull this off right quick so you can actually see the CPU and the Northridge chip. This here is a Pentium D, actually, excuse me, a Pentium dual core processor. And an Intel Northridge, not sure exactly what model. But it has integrated graphics with HDMI outputs, and I mean this is how this is how the CPU on a laptop looks. It looks different in a modern desktop processor because modern desktop CPUs have heat spreaders, while in the notebook area they never actually used heat spreaders on these chips because they didn't need them because the heat that comes straight off the die goes straight to this heat pipe, while in desktops you have a big heat sink that sits on top of the CPU. Let me go ahead and talk about the issues with the HP laptops. HPs are definitely known for several issues with their cooling systems. Well, With all laptops you gotta always keep an eye on your fins here. Make sure they're clean and if they ever get dirty clean them out. This notebook actually had really clean fins on it Upon the first time I pulled this um, thing out, and this is a used computer, but I don't think it had that. I don't think it has that much use on it. It's in really good condition. But um, anyways, with HPs, their cooling design is designed to where dust and stuff will easily accumulate into these fins. And I really don't like that because once this clogs up, the computer really has no way of cooling itself. This is a really bad design overall. Let's get a close up here of this. Of these fins just to show you what they look like and usually when you have fans this close together dust will accumulate so easy I see it with desktop heat sinks and these fans that go on the laptops any kind of cord that has the fans that close together you have to keep you have to keep an eye on because they will clog up so easy and the way like I say the way um, that the HPs are designed they clog up so easy Anyways, when it comes to cooling systems and HPs, you have two main issues. Of course, the like I was saying before, you had the issue with your fans getting clogged up with dust, and how HPs design can easily clog up. There's another more serious issue with some HP model laptops, especially in the DV series. And this is a known flaw with actually a lot of computers with NVIDIA graphics on board. In the DB6000 laptops with NVIDIA graphics, you have the CPU back here more or less, and then you have your Northridge. So the heat coming off of your CPU is going across your Northridge, and of course as we all know, NVIDIA Northridges get really hot. So you're getting all this heat going over to here into this fan, and the fan is set to where it don't come on that often. That's another flaw. 
newer BIOS updates set the fan to come on earlier. But there's even a bigger issue with the DV6000 model. In a stock configuration, the heat pipe barely even touches the Northbridge chip die. You can actually see a gap between the thermal pillow and the die of the NVIDIA Northbridge. So the Northbridge just sits there and builds up heat and nothing is there to dissipate the heat. So the chip gets so hot that it will break the solder loose from the board and you'll get loose solder connections. So you have to either reflow the board for temporary, for temporary use or reball it for a long time reliability. And of course, fix the flaw. Many people, when they reball, reflow the chips, they will actually take this thermal pillow off and they'll add in several copper shims to get better pressure applied to the NVIDIA Northbridge to better cool it. But anyways, that's just a common issue with HPs, and that's that's why I don't like them. I think they're very un unreliable. My friend Robbie has a DV9, and I just cleaned it not too long ago. I think it's a couple months ago. I think it's back in the summer. I took it over here and blew an air compressor, use the air compressor, to blow air into the fans to clean them out. But now it's December, and that computer is overheating again. And I mean, the CPU will be pushing 80 to 90 degrees C. And it's an AMD processor, not sure what kind. With it, and it does have an AMD chipset. But um, this just comes to show I don't like HP for a reason. Their laptops are very unreliable, and it seems like their desktops are not built very well either. So, anyways, more or less, this is a simple approach to how a laptop cooling system works. You have this single heat pipe that runs through the notebook and cools certain components. So it's important when you're running your notebook on a bed or something to use a book or something under your notebook so this thing can draw air in so it won't overheat. And when it comes to netbooks, you have actually a cooling plate on better model netbooks anyway, like the Acer Aspire 1. You actually have a cooling plate that goes across the Atom processor and the Northbridge chip. And the setup works fine enough for the Except it's in the netbook because the netbook don't get the netbook's CPU doesn't put out as high wattage as let's say a notebook processor. The netbooks do run a bit on the hot side, but the CPUs and netbooks like the Atom N270 is rated for 95 degrees C max temperature. That's a very hot temperature, but it's designed to be able to handle that much. So you're probably wondering when it comes to laptops, what brand should you buy? My personal experience, I think Dell's and Toshiba's are decent brands. Stay away from Dell netbooks, though, because they don't have any sort of active cooling in them, and that, is, that has resulted in several failures. I think when it comes to um, notebooks and netbooks, I think Acer is also a decent brand. You can use Acer, probably MSI, Asus, Toshiba, and Dell. I think those are the more reliable brands. Stay away from HP, though. Anyways, any questions or comments, feel free to ask.